Depending upon where your personal focus in our banjo world is, the name Ned Lubarecki will likely conjure up different images. A modern-day banjo renaissance man, Lubarecki has proven himself to be an accomplished performing and recording artist, a highly regarded educator, a respected banjo journalist and broadcaster, as well as a guiding force in the future of the banjo in bluegrass music. Still, while this diverse career path reflects each of his varied interests, influences, and inspirations, Lou Barecki remains steeped in the traditions of the instrument and music that he loves. Born in 1965 in Baltimore, Ned's musical spark was ignited at the age of 12 when he saw a banjo as part of a local bluegrass band called Coup de Grass. The Christmas gift of a banjo, along with a couple of Steve Martin comedy records which featured the instrument, were stepping stones to actual banjo lessons with Bob Tice in 1979. After working with local bands during the 1980s, Ned joined Paul Adkins' Borderline Band and became a professional touring musician in 1986. A harbinger of things to come, in 1990, Lou Barecki began the broadcasting portion of his career at WFMD Radio in Frederick while continuing to tour and record. Following a career path which recognized opportunity, Ned moved to Branson in 1992 and later joined the Missouri-based Radio Flyer Bluegrass Band. Later, Ned ushered in the new century with a move to Nashville, where he became a regular member of Chris Jones and the Night Drivers, while performing throughout the years with other bands such as The Rarely Heard, Tony Trishka's Double Bluegrass Spectacular, Larry Cordell in Lonesome Standard Time, and Ned Ski and Mojo. With influences ranging from banjo icons Earl Scruggs, J.D. Crow, Tony Trishka and others, coupled with diverse input from non-banjo types such as Eddie Van Halen, Oscar Peterson and Dave Brubeck, Ned developed a personal playing style which is both hard driving as well as pyrotechnic when needed. All attributes which made him an in-demand educator as well as performer. In addition to countless private lessons, as well as being an instructor at every major banjo camp around the world, Luberecki has impacted thousands of aspiring banjoists through instructional books and videos marketed by Alfred Music, True Fire, and The Murphy Method. A career milestone occurred in 2004 when Lou Barecki began a long-standing relationship with Sirius XM Radio, becoming the first national broadcaster to feature bluegrass music on an ongoing basis. Putting his radio voice to good use, Ned has become the go-to host for many live events, including the prestigious IBMA Awards show, as well as World of Bluegrass concerts. In the realm of print media, Lou Barecki has been a regular contributor to publications such as the Banjo Newsletter, Bluegrass Unlimited, Radio Magazine, and Bluegrass Today. Since 2015, Ned Lou Barecki has been part of the acclaimed Becky Buller Band while garnering personal recognition including the 2018 IBMA Banjo Player of the Year Award as well as the 2023 IBMA Broadcaster of the Year. And, in the midst of all of this activity, Ned corralled the creative forces necessary to produce his highly acclaimed solo CD, Take 5. Noting how he approaches both his life and his music with positive energy and enthusiasm, Steve Martin captured the essence of Ned Lubarecki in describing his music as an absolutely joyous, riveting, beautifully syncopated example of the beauty of the banjo. Nuff said. Please welcome to the stage, new Hall of Fame inductee, Ned Luberecki.
Ned, on behalf of the Board of Directors, Hall of Fame, past Hall of Fame members, welcome into the Hall of Fame. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's heavier it's than it looks. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing I'm used to carrying heavy things. That thing's a, like a three-pound tone ring right there. Oh, gee whiz. Oh, this is something I can honestly say as a youth I never dreamed of. Of course, there was no Banjo Hall of Fame when I was a youth. But uh, no, really, this is a, it was very unexpected when I got the phone call from Johnny. He had uh, left a message on my, uh, on my voicemail and said, uh, you know, hey, Ned, will you call me back? And I thought, oh, boy, I get to come back to help with somebody else's induction, you know, and I was excited about that. And then he said it was going to be me, and I thought, no, I heard that wrong. I didn't think that was a, a real thing. Oh, uh, I need to thank so many people. I want to thank my wife, Kelly. Thank you. Love you. <clears throat> uh, my thank you list goes way back to uh, my, first, uh, my first couple of days learning how to play the banjo with my teacher Bob Tice and some guys I used to work with at a music store back in Baltimore called Baltimore Bluegrass, uh, Steve Cunningham and Mike Munford who really uh, showed me a lot about uh, the banjo and music and life and all sorts of things. Uh, all the bands I've played in through the years from the Sater Hill Band back in Baltimore to Paul Adkins to uh, to uh, the Rarely Heard to uh, nowadays w uh, well with Chris Jones and then with the Becky Buller Band and oh ever since I started playing the banjo to me there was always I was always just looked at that next thing you know I remember when I first learned to play I thought wouldn't it be cool if I ever got to play in a jam session with other people and then that finally happened and then I saw a band play and I thought wouldn't it be It'd be awesome if I just ever was part of a band, you know, and, and then I got in a band, and then I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if I ever played in a band that played, like, on stage, and just every step of the way, the only thing I ever really saw was sort of, like, the maybe the next thing, and I always looked at it as, as wouldn't that be, just be cool if I ever got to do that? Uh, my love of radio actually sort of predates my time with the banjo, and I never thought that those two worlds would collide. I always thought that uh, being a radio broadcaster might be my day job to help support my banjo habit. Uh, I, I really have to thank uh, the guys at Sirius XM, Chris Jones and uh, Terry Hurd, uh, uh, Kyle Cantrell and Joey Black for bringing me on and uh, letting me play bluegrass music and play the banjo actually on the air. If you've never tuned in, I do a thing called More Banjo Sunday where I started doing a thing called the Sunday Banjo Lesson, teaching just a few little tips about the banjo every Sunday. I just, one hour of the show, I just say, here's something you probably didn't know about the banjo, and I'll do it. And the thing that it never occurred to me was, I just saw it as something that might be entertaining. I just thought, well, this is something that'll kill a little time, people might find interesting, who knows. Uh, through the years, people, I don't even know how many, have come up to me and said, you know, I listen to you every Sunday, and you made it sound so easy, I went out and got a banjo, and I want to learn how to play. And they've shown up at music camps where I've taught and said, hey, I heard you on the radio, and I wanted to come you know, take lessons from you because I heard you do this and you made it sound easy. And it just, that's one of the things that uh, just is really sort of special to me because you never think of what kind of influence you might have on somebody. And I always think it was so important to me, the people like my heroes, like, uh, well, people you saw up there, Tony Trishka and Alan Mundy and some of the many Hall of Fame members here uh, who were really kind to me as a, as a kid and said, hey, you know, you're learning to play the banjo. That's cool. You know, here's something. Let me show you this. And, and I've always tried to pay that forward. And so that's, that's why this means something to me uh, here tonight. So uh, to the board, to everybody involved with the American Banjo Museum, thank you. <laughs> 